hello lovelies it's monday morning hope you're all well um had good weather here over the weekend all turned into a bit of an adventure um we were doing the race for life yesterday so that was a load of us walking in our local park to raise money for cancer research it's something i do with my family every year my niece her other half and their children um were on holiday they were hiring they'd hired a camper van so they were driving around been to visit other relatives and because they needed to be here yesterday for the race they had a couple of nights in my local town at a local place where you can park up the van and you know. well my little littlest great niece um had been a bit poorly and my niece had called her gp that's right heidi she had and the GP had said, I'd like to see her. And my niece said, well, you can't because we're not there sort of thing. So I think the best is she just checked out. And of course, as is the way with children, especially by this point, the kid was fine. But there's still that sense of you need to get it checked out. So we tried to go to the local walk-in centre. No appointments available there, which rather defeats the object of a walk-in centre, I thought. But I don't understand how these things work. So we asked if um, there was a capacity to see her as a sort of non-urgent case at the local hospital. So I said, go there. So we spent Friday afternoon at the local hospital. <laughs> Baby is fine. Baby is absolutely fine. Um, but, you know, the doctor has told you to check something out. It would be unusual not to. So that was all uh, a bit of an adventure. Um, so that was Friday. Saturday I was moving things around in here. I've got a bookcase back. Oh, no, it's there. Um, <laughs> uh, I had put my books on the shelves over here, but um, just it works better on this bookcase. So, uh, so I've moved a few things around. There's a cabinet, a sort of tall, narrow chest that used to be in here that's now in another room. So I've been playing Tetris with the house, which is usual. Um, and then yesterday we did the race. Now I, it's a 5k walk. Um, and the littlest, not the, the baby, but the, the younger of a small child related to us coming up six. <laughs> We'd done about a kilometer and she was like, I'm tired. And there was an option to do a 3k race. So good old great auntie Les. Come on Rosie, we'll do the 3k. So, <laughs> so we had a slightly shorter walk, which was fine. And she's a sweet little thing, so absolutely fine. So that was yesterday. And then we all went out for lunch. Beautiful weather. Um, but a bit of a breeze so it didn't get too hot because I have done that walk in sort of hot sun and although it's only 5k which is about three miles um it's still in in warm weather you're still feeling it but uh breeze coming through just kept it comfortable so that was good so today second part of my time off work um I'm putting the books on said shelf that way it's there so it always looks like I'm pointing at the bureau when I'm pointing there. anyway doesn't matter but I will sort the rest of this room out a bit and yeah a bit of a more sociable week this week I'm uh, having coffee with my mate man tomorrow meeting a friend on Wednesday so yeah still pottering but just chillaxing as you do well I hope you're doing that too Cheers. I knew there was something on Saturday as well. I was on the Zoom call with Barbara of Flame and Fibre, hosted by Valerie and a lot of you other lovelies there. So great to see everyone. Um, good fun. Good fun always. And uh, yeah, sort of chatting. We, we kind of covered a range of subjects um, from different knitting patterns, different techniques, different yarns two cow flatulence yeah we, we covered a range of subjects as you do hello lovelies coming towards the end of the week seagulls are 
tweeting. Do they tweet? They kind of squawk, don't they? Um, and I have two things to show you. The first is I won a prize. Very exciting. So this was from Arctic Crafts. Benta of Arctic Crafts. There's the uh, the Epilogue Lady podcast. And Arctic Crafts is a, a yarn company on Etsy. I will put the details below. She ran a make-along for tees, short-sleeved sweaters. And I entered a magpie and came away with the grand prize. So I was very excited by that. So let me show you it. Two beautiful skeins of yarn. So thank you, Benta. Just marvellous. This is... Uh, fine merino fingering, 100% Falkland merino, 100 grams, 400 meters superwash in the tidal wave colorway. So beautiful tonal blue, lovely feel to this. Um, no idea what I'm going to make, but how gorgeous. Oh. Uh, Benta is now running a make along, it's her Arctic Summer of Socks make along. So if you're a sock knitter, and I'm sure you watch her podcast anyway, but if you're a sock knitter, check her out. And she has her podcast, her yarn shop, and the sock make-along. So, all the good things. Uh, as some yarn was coming to me from Norway, I ordered some as well. So this is the prize for the clearly not quite enough yarn make-along, sweater make-along. I don't even know what it's called. The, the, the make-along we're running. Yeah. Got this beautiful Poldale sock. Um, it's 80-20 80, 80, Poldale wool and nylon superwash. Again, 100 grams, 400 metres. I'm going to completely mispronounce this name, but it's Pippi Husset. I hope that's somewhere near what it should be. So this really lovely, bright, summery yellow with red speckles. So this will be the prize in the drawer at the end of this month. And again, feels gorgeous. Now I've been off work this week, it's the second week of my annual leave. And when, I don't know if you find this, but if you normally work, when you're not working, or whenever you find yourself in, the situ in a situation which isn't your usual routine, it kind of frees up the mind a bit, new ideas come along. And... I realised I didn't have many projects on the go, which is unusual for me. And I thought, where are all my cables? I have some Chowgu needles, which I really love, uh, but I have more Knit Picks or Knit Pro in the US needles and cables, which I also enjoy using. Um, and I thought, I didn't understand why I didn't have, didn't seem to have many cables given that I knew that they weren't on needles and on projects. And I have always kept the cables in the little packets that they come in when you buy them. But I mismeasured them. So I would have lots of cables in one packet, which said, say, you know, 100 centimetres, but they weren't actually 100 centimetre cables. So this is where I was going wrong. Now, part of the reason for this is I am easily confused. And if you have, for example, an 80 centimeter cable, the idea is that the entire cable is 80 centimeter when you have the needle tips on it. So the cable itself is actually something like 57 centimeters. This is why I'd put them in the wrong packet. So, so I thought I would like an alternative method of storing these. The other thing with knit picks cables is that they, um, if you have them curled up in their packet, they stay curled up. They they have memory, so they will stay curled up. Which means if you're taking a long needle out of the packet, it's very curly, can be quite cumbersome to work with. So I have now made a hanging storage system for them using old cotton reels and some plastic thread that I got ages ago that I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with. I, I've seen people have made dog leads and that sort of thing with this plastic thread. 
I'm not going to do that but it proved useful for this exercise so I have a cotton reel for each length of cable and I've written on them the actual length of the cable and the length kind of as advertised as it were so um, I could say 57 centimeters yes 57 centimeters makes an 80 centimeter cable for example looks very messy at the moment because these cables have all been in their storage um, packets until yesterday I am hopeful that they will drop in time and will sort of hang a bit more um, a bit more loosely not the prettiest thing in the world I could have spent time painting the cotton reels perhaps using you know putting the numbers on using calligraphy or um, stencils or something like that uh, I didn't do that yeah I didn't do that partly because I put a little hook behind this bookcase which sits next to my knitting chair and it sits there so it's on hand but it's not particularly visible so it's not a decorative piece it's purely functional and I'm rather pleased with it so far we'll see how it holds up time will tell so I think that's going to be it for this week um, we've had glorious weather we're about to have a heat wave apparently yeah I'm not sure why I'm croaky I'm certainly not feeling ill I think I just need a cup of tea so I'll rectify that very shortly um, yes it's been another week of, of pottering and I know that I'm going to go back to work and people will say what did you do um, made stuff got rid of stuff decluttered a cupboard it's not going to feel like uh, big things but small things are as important as big things. This is, life is not a competition. So it really doesn't matter. I'm happy with what I've done largely. I mean, you always wish you could do more because there's always something to be done. But generally, contented. So I'll live with that quite, quite happily. I hope you're all well. Um, I hope you're all enjoying whatever you're doing. And I will put some footage uh, at the end of this. Some of Madam, obviously, because we have to have some Heidi footage. And also a fox, a very bold and brazen fox. We have uh, French doors in this room. And the dog was barking and scrabbling at the doors. And I could, I looked across and there was this fox and it just went and laid down in the garden. Well, naturally, I didn't let the dog out. I didn't want the dog and the fox to meet, fight, the dog to gain fox fleas, anything like that. So I thought probably best if the fox just goes somewhere else. So I opened the door and the fox just trotted down the garden a bit further and laid down again. I was holding on to the dog at this point because I didn't want them to meet. But what a brazen creature. Fair play. So I had to open the other door and step out before it realised that I might be going to chase it away and then it, it scarpered. Yeah, very surprising behaviour. But a lot of our neighbours do feed the foxes, so maybe it was just waiting for supper. I don't know. Anyway, that has been my week. I hope yours has been good and I hope that you're well and that you are having fun. So take care. Thanks very much for being here. See you next week. Cheers. Bye-bye.